Ah, welcome to the podcast for empathy and imagination. This is the only podcast with Drew and Aubrey that has the name the podcast for empathy and imagination. This is the show in which we laugh about, discuss, preview, chuckle about, debate, and find out about the various topics of the day and how they might relate to empathy and imagination. My name is Aubrey. And I am Drew Clark. And I would like to thank everyone for listening, taking the time out of your day to listen Final Corp is to us. Final Corp is trying to sneak in there. Just a minute, Final Corp. Final Corp is champing at the bit. Well, of course they are. Um, but we'll get to you. I, Drew Clark, would very much like to acknowledge you all for taking the time out of your day to listen to a podcast about empathy and imagination. Yes, thank you. So, thank how you. about a check-in? Oh, let's check in. Okay, I'll like go. To check I'll go. in with you. See what. See how are you doing? Oh, let's see how am how I doing. your week? Um, you know, a lot of a lot of hot tub work this week. Okay. I've um, through my quests of trying to find a job, I've, I've figured out that the time to take off to try to find a new job is past, and I've now I've got some a couple of decisions to make. So you took time off recently? Well, what I did was I only was working hot tubs three days a week, and I was doing other jobs or searching for jobs the other days a week. Oh, I see. And that's over with now. So now I'm doing hot tubs six days a week. Dang. So. That's intense, man. It's really hard. We were building a hot tub yesterday, and you know, it, it went all right. Yeah. But uh, I'm in a lot of pain. I mean, I physically have hurt my body. A few pla- mine are just aches and pains, this was but a the soreness. Making a building a new wooden hot tub. That's correct. We built a six foot teak hot tub yesterday. Okay, teak sucks because it's so it's heavy. So heavy. The boards are smaller. That doesn't help. Yeah, the slats are narrower and thinner, mm-hmm. but heavier, heavier, heavier <laughs> than the Alaskan redwood or the uh, uh, Alaskan, Alaskan cedar. yellow cedar. Uh-huh. Yeah, totally. Damn. So, so I'm. I'm yeah. like, I need to make a decision. I know what that feels like. So you the do know body what being like. fatigued. I think I talked about this uh, at some point, but I used to have a job um, doing manual labor for State Park in Massachusetts, Hall of Massachusetts. And um, it was really satisfying because I'd be so exhausted by the end of the day. I'd be so ready. Sleep felt, li- it felt like I had earned sleep. Mm, that's a good feeling because my body was so just fully taxed yeah i was in great shape that y- summer isn't that, it was like one that, summer yeah you probably just, could feel your guns yeah and we we basically um <clears throat> built we trailblazed we built a trail through like a bunch of forest doing with a truck or what you no no just by hand, like macheting down the things then clearing the path then bringing in the uh the railroad ties for steps Putting them in. Oh my god! I, I've always imagined how that happened. Yeah. I never knew it was that. Fucking badass! Because this was a state park that had just lain fallow for a while, and we were charged with sort of getting it up and running and opening it as an actual state park. So that we, is a cool. So we had job. to clear the whole. It was this like recessed army bunker, in, like a gun emplacement, I think. Shooting and, range. And uh, so it was all concrete. And all graffitied, and we had to like manicure all the grass, get rid of the graffiti, clean all the the little rooms, and and at the t- it was on this hill at the top of the hill is this tower, it's called Fort Revere, and it was pretty cool because we had the keys to the tower, ooh, so you could go in the tower and just go to the top, and it was just this this like sort of lookout room. It's like it a, pretty state, a state job, right? Yeah, it was a uh, it was a state the state uh, it was like EB Parks, be the equivalent of the East Bay Parks. It's pretty cool. Yeah, it was pretty cool. So I know that feeling, and I also know that feeling be- because I do hot tub builds too. You know, so I'm familiar, man. But sorry, go ahead with your check in. That was well, a parenthetical. It's you know it's part of it. It's all right. Oh, no, oh, not yet. So all kinds of. All kinds of sounds. Everyone, quit in on jumping this. in here. We're just gonna do this, okay? 
I'm feeling like it's time to shit or get off the pot. I've got some decisions to make. There's like a job offer that would almost be sustainable, but I'm more thinking about going into business for myself. Hmm. And I've been working full time hot tubs. And the thing is, the decision that's been on my plate is thinking about moving to Sacramento for the pool cheap. route for the cheap rent. Oh, yeah. And pool root combination. And the hot, hot, still yeah. air. It would be hotter than this by a lot. Yeah. But you have s- you have friends up there, so you already sort of have a support I have one system. one friend. One friend. One friend up there. So, huh. we've talked about well. it a lot recently, me and my lady, and it's it's we're actually leaning against that more now. Because of, like, all of the things that I've got here, like the, this podcast, Bike Order Warriors, several bands I'm in, yeah. are all things that I produce and provide value to me and maybe eventually to other people. That's a real... You know, that's a real concern. It's a, it's a big, you're basically I'd be giving up a lot for very little because the rent difference is like 700 bucks a month. But yeah. I make, I would make that up from the price of pools here anyway. And you wouldn't have any band. You'd have to start over with bands. Join all new bands, start all new bands from zero. I mean, the podcast could still work some kind of Skype. We could do a remote thing. But it, it wouldn't, wouldn't be, be as cool. It wouldn't be as fun. No. Yeah. But, you know, you got to got to do what you got to do. Right. I got to do what I got to do. So my check-in involves me gotten to do what I got to do. And I'm really happy to be, have the work hot tub and I just got off work. I was working today. Yeah. Uh, I got to two hot tubs today and uh hmm. I'm just great I'm grateful for it and I'm ready for something that pays. So even with 6 days on the hot tub and it's not enough. We'll see. I don't think so. Yeah. Because it's I mean, not th- like full days, it's just sort of—they're like not full days. They get canceled uh, regularly. Okay. Yeah. And uh, I, th- I'm don't get a receipt with how I'm paid. So it's sort of like he pays me a number, and I just shrug, and there's no proof, any direction of anything. Mm. So it's like, am I getting all my hours? Am I o- getting overpaid? Probably not. It's possible, but it's no possible. one knows. And. We have the same boss. He's been generous at times. That yeah. is a capacity of his. To my, be I mean, I would just, I would say my feeling is that he's probably not shorting you at all. Yeah, he probably isn't <laughs> shorting me, but the work gets canceled a lot. Yeah, that's annoying. Like I, we had a build planned, and it was like, nope. Okay, yeah, go home. But then I worked eleven hours yesterday. Uh, okay. Straight. So yeah. it's like. Nah, 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 nah. That's my check-in. How the fuck are you doing? Doing good. I just want to say we're enjoying... Uh, I'm enjoying a Racer 5 I'm IPA from Bear Republic. And I'm doing the Sierra Nevada Tropical Torpedo Delicious Beers. Thank you, Bear yes. Republic and Sierra Nevada. Very refreshing on this sweltering, Very. hot Northern California day here at Crockett Saunas. Gradient Saunas. Um, I'm doing pretty good. I thought, what did I have for my check-in? Oh, I just looked at a, I just looked at an apartment in Crockett. No way! Yeah. Oh, we be neighbors! Yeah, it's like one block from Toots. Are you fucking serious? Right there. Toots is Right fun, at that, man. at that light, take a right, and it's just right there. You looked at an apartment in Crockett. And it's one bedroom. Oh, I'm so excited. And it's fucking, I mean, I, you know, what can you do? But I really hope I get it because it's sweet. What's it like? It's like high ceilings, one bedroom, lots of light. There's like transom windows. There's like a huge, there's like a huge bay window in the breakfast nook off of the you kitchen. Do you have water view? Uh, no. But it's second floor. Which is cool. Um, <coughs> so no upstairs neighbors stomping around. <coughs> and it's got like a warped kitchen floor, you know, because it's like an old building. So, yeah, they're just, you know, I filled out an application, gave her a check for 20 bucks to run my credit. We'll see what happens. She also said there's another apartment opening up in the same triplex or whatever. Um which is another one bedroom. So I, you know, I was kind of like, yeah, I'm ready to move in now. Yeah, let's can we tell this, the listeners like, what, what some of the details are? Like is it a uh 
well, it's, yeah, hardwood floors, uh, high ceilings, which is cool, one bedroom. Basically, like a kitchen and living room. is. It's basically two rooms. So one is the bedroom and one is sort of the big kitchen living room. Where does your poop go? And then the sink. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's a there's a bathroom off of the bedroom. Oh, so it's like a master bedroom in the yeah, kitchen. Yeah, it's a true one bedroom. Okay. Well, there's oh. a separate room that is the bedroom, but the bathroom is off of the bedroom, which is a little weird but i mean so, so it's just me so. guests well if i was when i would be hanging out with you over there i'd go through your bedroom to use the bathroom right i'm fine with that yeah dude that's i'm excited i, I imagine it's a price you can afford yeah it's super i mean compared to berkeley prices it's fucking super cheap well then fucking and you know i just hope i just hope i make the cut right it sucks to be at the mercy of someone else yeah Part of my definition of success is, one, don't have any jerks in your life. Two, minimize the number of people that you're that you're beholden to that mm. have power over you in w- one way or another. Mm. So, um, yeah, you know, it'd be awesome to, to get that. It'd be pretty cool. We'd be neighbors. It'd be cheaper. It'd be bigger. It'd be better. Be a little you bit of a commute. You'd be commuting for both jobs now. Be commuting so, for both jobs. Yeah. yeah. But well, that's what I do. I'm okay with that. <laughs> you know? You've got a car. Fine with that. Got a car. Yeah. Wow. That's, um, I'm just excited about your check in. Yeah. Be, that would be awesome. Because I didn't want to go, like, there's Benicia and Vallejo. Things are cheap up there. Uh, then you're the bridge. Then yeah. you're over the bridge and you're paying like 120 bucks a month in tolls. Yep. More, actually, because that, that was a five day calculation. But, you do six days often, huh? Right. So then you just that's where that's where that difference in rent goes. To the bridge people. And plus another like twenty minutes on your commute, you know. So Yeah. So I was trying to stay south of the bridges. So basically Crockett Port Costa would be as far as you'd want to go. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I so I'm hoping that works out. Man, that would be something if we were neighbors. I just checked it out today, this morning. Oh, that's what you were doing. Yeah. Fucking a. Oh totally weird uh, person, like oh, yeah. sort of emotion, artist, emotionless person. person. Oh. Huh. Not an artist. Yeah, it was funny. But there were two. I asked her if there was a lot of interest. She said yes. Oh, of course. Two other people came in while I was there. Yeah. But it wasn't mobbed like you see in Berkeley. Where it's a line out the fucking door. Yeah, where it's just like suddenly there's a whole murder of people there, like 30 people all showing up right on. Oh, yeah. You know, I've one minute after lines. the thing starts. I've been in those lines. Yeah. And you just kind of look at each other like, ah, good luck. <laughs> so it's like, ah, you know, I guess it all comes down to the credit, credit score. Credit score, job. Yeah. Sometimes personality. Good thing you're so smooth. Yeah, I hope so. That's my check-in, playing a lot of music as well. You know, that's that's always happening. How's the music feeling? Music's yeah. feeling good. Tuesday and Friday, I play 90s rock. Uh, Wednesday, we were supposed to do covers, but I had to look at apartments. You gotta Thursday somewhere. we do black metal. Mm-hmm. Uh, but man, I I'm so affected by how shitty that studio is. It you like feel affected affects by my it? my mood. I I thought you seemed a little distracted Thursday night. Were you? I was just. It felt like. Well, all right. To be honest, the guitar. I just. It was so. It just sounded like shit. Everything sounded like shit. That's what that was part of it. This is tell the truth, man. What's Everything going on? Everything sounded like shit. Uh, things are muddy. Um, it was like hot and just uncomfortable. It's like harsh lighting, just barely standing. Negative room. feng shui. It's like hold your base a certain angle because you yeah. hit it on shit. That's and everywhere. like so much talking uh, about parts. The talking, which to me is like. I I'm it's so almost a red flag. Mm. To have so much talking? Yeah, like way more talking than actual playing music. I don't know if that how that bodes for the future of the band, but some things, you know, sometimes you got to talk about stuff, but if you're not like 
incrementally improving on parts and adding parts, you know, sometimes I just want to do that and not talk about everything so much. Uh -huh. You know, <clears throat> I think it's fine to talk about it. I was like thinking at that last practice about requesting to not talk as much. Yeah. I was like, we, we have very little time here in the studio. We spend it all doing this. Right. We can do this outside. Yeah. We can't do this. Right. While right, we're talking. Right, right. Yeah, in that context, you have an opportunity to play music. You can't, yeah. play, you can't do that on the sidewalk. No, it's not. The cops will come. So do you found the the sounds were muddy too i could speak on that but i want to hear you what you sounds say were first. muddy like the guitar was super muddy and super loud it seems it seemed really it seemed too loud we to we had him turned down twice and still was like still seemed too loud yeah yeah i don't know maybe i'm you know i'm not a prima donna but maybe it's just playing music for so long uh i don't Maybe I don't put up with certain things as well as I should. I think... Like, I turn down if you're tuning. You don't need to be at maximum volume when you're tuning your guitar. And I've requested that. And, like, <laughs> if it's if there's a squeal coming out of your guitar, just try to end it as fast as possible. Don't let it keep going on and on. And if your part, you got you have to figure... Everyone is responsible for figuring out how what the duration of their part is. So when we say, want, uh, yeah, let's play two of those... It may mean something different to each of us, but each of us is tasked with figuring out what that means. So that's another thing. That was another thing. I was like, Ugh. there's an I, I want to add to that. And uh, then you had a challenge of like, there's the the guitar player has never we we, we have these the two and a half songs or one point eight point four songs. And it's like the, the guitarist has never done the time changes with you and me as the rhythm section. Yeah. He's never started or ended the riffs where they start or end. It's always right. been a bleed over and then trying to catch back up, usually incorrectly, until about the end. Yeah. And then we switch to the next thing that they're doing. The pat it's like. It's like there's a delay. It's the delay. There's a delay there. Yeah. And starting songs, songs not starting correctly. Like how many times did I do the stick count and you and me and Evan started and then the guitarist was like, oh, wait. Yeah. Like how many times did that happen just Thursday? It happened a bunch of times. It was like more than five times. I was like, what is going on? Yeah, I don't know. It's like, I don't know what's going on. I don't know. <sighs> I feel good. I feel better try talking to hit, about you it. You know, though. I try to hit the empathy button. <laughs> it's like just... <laughs> I'm just keep hitting it. It's not lighting up. <laughs> it's not. But I'm just like, yeah, yeah, I got to hit that empathy button. Yeah. It's good for try us to, to understand. Yeah. yeah. Try to understand what's going on over there. Because there is some coolness that comes from there, from the guitar player. Yeah, yeah. Like, I like some of those riffs. Yeah. Arpeggios especially are cool. There's a there's an added challenge where this guitar player also plays the drums, and not at the same time though. No, I'd like to, but I can't. Uh, he would give me drum advice. He gives me drum advice that is usually what I'm already doing, or isn't the rhythm of what he's playing. Like yeah. is a different time signature. Yeah. Like that happened Thursday too. Is it? Can you just go this? Do it like this, and it's like, yeah, that's a different time signature than you're playing with your guitar. Yeah, and that's okay. We can do that. It just takes. We got to line up at a couple of key points. Mm -hmm. I'm willing to do ultra polyrhythmic stuff, but that's not what he was going for. He didn't know what he was in. Yeah, it can be a challenge. <sighs> so, sure. so audience, you can you can hear in my voice. I feel pleased to be talking about this on the air feels like honest feels like yeah genuine good. and it's like yeah th i guess there is some like i want to have more empathy there too I, I push the empathy button and uh i'm waiting for it to light up also yeah i'm feeling judgmental well i feel judgmental i feel like i hold my tongue so that's probably what you're sensing yeah because i want things i want to say that if you hit the empathy button it sort of mutes the it, you hold your tongue if you hit it. It's pausing so. your story, yeah. But, yeah, 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 sometimes I'm like, 
the mass hole comes out of me. I oh, want to say uh, some stuff. Boston, you know, it's, it'd almost be better if you at least said some of it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. But then it's more talking. Right. <laughs> right. And we're back to, we can't stop talking. Yeah. Yeah. So that's okay. yeah, that's the check in. Wow, that's I my checked check in, in again too. All right, thank you. Can we checked have a round of applause there? Because that was a pretty good check in. Thank you for your check in. Good check in. Yeah. You got a top bit? Well no. Okay. Fine. Well, I'll take a topic for both of us. So I was thinking about uh let's see. Ooh, heroes of the imagination. Ooh. I was wondering if you have any heroes of the imagination. Oh I have a couple. God. I'm not super prepared, but I can talk extemporaneously on a few uh, individuals that I really like. Okay. Admire. He- heroes of the imagination to me are people like that they are being internally trustful, I guess. Like they're they're figuring out new things that is a compilation of the things around them. Mm. And they're putting them into action, and that makes them the heroes. That they change the world from that. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I, sh- I could just spaddle off a few names, but it'd probably be more fun to say one, talk about it, say another one, talk about it. Yeah, bit. that sounds good. Okay, Elon Musk okay. for me is a hero of the imagination. If I think about wanting to work for somebody else, he's one of the few people yeah. I'd want to actually work for, and not have my own. Company. Because he has a vision. Because he does every company he starts is alignment with what I think would be good for the future. Yeah. And he has so many companies on so many angles. And every time you hear him speak, it's like when you compare that to what the politicians are saying, it's like, oh, wow, there's something really wrong with them. At least this guy is like he's getting stuff thinking done. Of getting stuff done with money. He's executing. He took money ideas. and made a bunch of shit. Yeah. He took a bunch of money from the, like, the government. Well, I'm sure they subsidized the fuck out of them for but, Tesla. Uh, I think it was Tesla. Yeah, car companies all get. I think it, they it all get been, that. Yeah, it might have been something else, but uh, might have been SpaceX. But yeah, might he seems been. to be doing cool stuff. He's, you know, he. I, a few episodes ago, I talked about one of the problems with our culture. In my view, is that we don't have a definitive future vision. You know, whereas in like the 60s, mm. it was like the year 2000, flying yeah. cars, moon colonies, blah, 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 blah. And that, got us, that, that got us to the moon <laughs> and all the stuff. Yeah. And then we, I don't know, we got disillusioned. The year 2000 rolled around and everyone was like, well, now it's yeah. just about new apps. That's the new, that's what I'm psyched about. That's what the future is. just going to be new apps. Yeah, where's More the, apps. Where's the seasteading companies that are starting that should have been, should have, wouldn't it be cool if they started? Yeah. So I think. Elon Musk is appealing because he seems to be executing some of those ideas that that are like almost sixties era. Oh, like colonizing picturesque. the moon. Col- you know, he just r- unveiled some plan for his uh, million uh, million population city on Mars. Oh, I'm not. A, please fill me in. I just I just saw the headline today. I don't okay, know, tell sure. tell tell the audience. Uh, I'm not. Sh- I'm not. I, that's all I know. A mil- he wants to put a million people he wants on to Mars. Make a colony on Mars, and he has a plan to have like a, a colony that's a million people. Wow! Last I and heard, and all I saw in the, it was that headline and like sort of a picture of like a Bucky dome, of course, geodesic dome. Of course, Bucky there. Last I heard, he was hoping for like two hundred thousand people, and that he could by twenty forty probably be happening. Yeah, see, that's pretty cool. Like, wouldn't you? So he go? he has the imagination. But he also, he's also executing the ideas. That's like the important part. Easy to come up with it. Uh, easy to imagine stuff, but to execute it way harder. So, yeah, I think I think he's a good uh, candidate for a hero of the imagination. Hero, okay. Do you want another one or do you, wa- should we, you want to say one? Uh, yeah, why don't you hit me with another one? Um, <coughs> okay, so this... Oh, well, we talked... Bucky came up in that. I th- Well... So, I Buckminster Fuller. Definitely. Uh, known as Bucky... Co- uh, Informally, he he was a hero in the imagination. Absolutely, and he's the he is the um, the predecessor to who I w- who I was going to say next. Oh, Jacques Fresco. Yeah, he recently died. Oh, really? Yeah, Jacques finally passed. He uh, was ninety six. Yeah, he was up there. 
Yeah, he had Damn. done a lot of good in the world. I mean, he he had gone as far as to going into in the, like the early I think sixties. He would go into like white supremacy groups and convince them to disband, and they would. That like happened a few times. Huh. Like he just so what rocking does, it for the human race, man. What was his deal, Shock Fresco? He he's an inventor, when did he start industrial designer, industrial an artist. Industrial designer by by uh, trade. Right. By that, that was his background. Mm-hmm. He also invented a car with forty parts. Huh. Or no, is that was that Bucky or Jacques? You know, we might have to check that. It was, but it to me, it goes it goes Buckminster Fuller, Jacques Fresco, right? I guess Elon Musk. Mm. Jacques Fresco had what is it? Project uh, Jupiter, pro- the Jupiter it's the project? Venus project, Venus project, right? Which I was one m- affiliated planets. with for some time. And they were for a while. They were uh, making noise about teaming up with. The Zeitgeist movement. Well, we did. We had a full alliance with the Venus Project, as the the Zeitgeist movement goes. So, what we was were the, promoting their films? So, what was the Venus Project? That was the Venus Project was a future city by design. Started by example, Jacques Fresco in Roxanne Meadows, in Roxanne Meadows yeah. in in Florida. Yeah, in Venus, Florida. Venus, Florida. They have the comp ball. Well, she. That's has why the I was confused because there's a Jupiter, Florida too. Oh, okay, that makes sense. Um, Okay. And it was like a future city, right? A plan for a future city. He wanted to first have an amusement park ah. that had all this stuff in it that people could come and check out. Right. And then eventually build a bunch of cities at once. I think we would need to build one city that was operating. Yeah. And then double it if it worked, you know, if so thusly possible. The resources exist, you know, like us. Mm-hmm. What was like the, par- uh, the paradigm of the city? Well, it was centralized the centrali- it w- distribution. No, or no something? it was decentralized technological abundance. So, basically, the systems were uh, independent, and there were multiple overlaps. Basically, using hmm. systems theory yeah. for a scientific method for social concern. So, all the isms could be you could pause any ism, maybe leave and go back to it if you wanted to. But in a in the Venus Project, the circular cities, there's n- there's no need for a state. Essentially, yeah, he had, that's right. He had circular, circular cities. That I mean, it's kind of yeah. weird because it's it's almost like you're you're imposing this strict uh, structure right. onto something that right. really is being promoted as not structurally right. Uh, that a lot of people had that problem with it. Yeah, a lot of zeitgeisters was like, "You're too specific." Like right. we want what you're thinking about. The ideas you have are good, but it doesn't have to be. But your drawings might be in that particular way. Yeah, they might be wrong. And he yeah. was like, "What I design today will be prisons to people of the future." Right. He knew that he going knew that. into it, but he's like, you "Do better than somewhere. this now." He's like, yeah. "Yeah, do better than this. Beat so, this." And so the Zeitgeist movement, which is about emergent, synergistic, resource-based economy. Correct. So they were, they were in bed with each other for a while. Few years, there was a full-on partnership, and films were cre- co-films were created and okay. cross-distributed, and we had multiple crossover events. Was there any concrete plans for s- cities or designs, no. or was it just it was well, more everyone? O- everyone always asks, "How do we get there?" You even get the banker who watches the movie, and he's like, "I love it. We'll just never get there. I can never see how we get there." That's what everyone asks, and yeah. so concrete plans about what to do were impossible in that environment. Now, right. we are. there are some. Even Peter Joseph was just on the news the other day talking about specific things. Coincidentally, things I was saying 10 years ago. Just saying. Coincidentally. Great minds, I think I like. Uh, so they, they're great ideas, and it's what, it's what I've been saying for years. Yeah. And it is to... He just came out with a new book, right, Peter Joseph? He did. It's, uh, well, he has the show he finished, Culture and Decline, and then this is the new human rights movement. Is the new book right? Right. I actually, haven't read it yet. We should try to get him on. Uh, that sounds great. So that okay. So Jacques Fresco is the hero of the imagination. Yes. He just died. Do we know what the fate of the Venus Project is? You know, Roxanne Meadows. Roxanne is now Meadows seems to be uh, the mind of wanting to hold on to her role in that. Yeah. So if she does that forever, it will die with her. Yeah. So she needs to include other people. And then it can grow. But until then, hmm. she's the only boss now. I think she wanted that. Not that she wanted Jacques dead. I don't, for a moment, play with that notion. I think she loved him dearly in many ways. Yeah. 
I, I worry for the Venus Project's actual fate. I think it may end up being just something we referred to in the past. It was a cool as idea. As a footnote to... As a fo- as, as starter, as a seed planter, as a, a advocation of information. Hmm. I, don't gonna, I don't think they're going to make an amusement park. I think the Zeitgeist movement just made a 5013C part of itself, so it can now accept donations and is a non-profit. What, uh, what do you think the Venus Project is going to do with Roxanne Meadows at the helm? Very little. Yeah. I think that with, with Roxanne Meadows at the helm instead of the hero Jacques Fresco, I'm afraid that she will continue to want to hold on to her um, prideful ownership of the project. That's really what the separation came from, too. There was a miscommunication about credit in some film that was happening. Somebody felt that they weren't given enough credit oh, for certain things and yeah. that someone was trying to take advantage of somebody else. Yeah, you can design the best society on paper, but humans will be humans. Right, and so PJ is like, hey, let's talk about it. I'm, I'm not sure I understand. You know, he, he went through what I would call, what I would do Yeah. in that instance to make peace, and they were like, no, no, it's over. Okay. Huh. So they chose division. Wow. And I'm, I'm afraid they're going to keep choosing division, which eventually you, is zero. You eventually get to zero. You need to do inclusion, I think. Yeah. Can't Inclu- divide by zero. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, uh, are there heroes of the imagination? Yeah. There's a lot. This is a, probably be an ongoing yeah. topic. I think I think we have a few more. Heroes I think. of the imagination. You know, a lot of them are uh, dead. A lot of them yeah. lived in antiquity. Um, a lot of are still alive. Elon Musk, for example, or William T. Vollman. Hmm. He's another hero of the imagination. He's a writer. He's a contemporary writer. He lives in Sacramento. Huh. And a total outsider. Uh, kind of a weirdo. <laughs> I like him already. Um, yeah, he's great, and he's like he's like the butterfly. He's he's like a moth to the flame of of sadness. He writes about interesting things, and he's uh, he do, he's done a lot of writing about prostitutes. Okay, he got to know prostitutes. Uh, and he sort of writes about their lives and uses that research to write huge fiction. But all of his books are like, they just get bigger each year. They get thicker, more pages. Wow. And, uh, yeah, it's funny. He talked about how at first um, the prostitutes didn't really want to open up to him mm-hmm. uh, emotionally. And because uh, they just thought he was... He, first of all, he looks like a serial killer. He's scary. Looking. <laughs> He's like a tall, acne-faced, huge glasses, like weird mop mop top haircut. Um, but yeah, at first the prostitutes didn't want to open up to him, and uh, so he, he has a story where he's he said he had to pretend to masturbate. Like he'd be asking them questions, and but he'd be like in the corner, like pretending to masturbate, just asking them questions about their life. And that's that's one of the only reasons that they yeah it's one of the only ways that they would actually respond to him and and like open up to him, but eventually he became friends with them and a lot of them and and wrote about their their stuff and uh, that's just one of many you know things that he writes about. But so he takes the lives of prostitutes and does takes photos of them too. Does he have sex with them? I think in the beginning he did. And then just kept paying for sex but stopped having sex? That's an right, interesting choice. Right, right, right. That doesn't, that's not usual. No. And so he would take, you know, his his money that he would get for writing writing some Esquire article and use that to pay prostitutes for research for his stuff. Wow. So he also did a study on uh, on violence. When is violence justified? 
and it's you know it's like ten volumes. It's th- like four thousand pages. Uh, called Rising Up, Rising Down. So to me, he is a hero of the imagination because hmm. he's very fearless, and he's just like he sort of just does what he does without really worrying about what other people think of what he does. It's pretty cool. Yeah. He doesn't waste too much energy. He is in fear mode about how it's going to land. No. He, and he's motivated. He said many times, he's just like, I want to, he's like, I know I'm talented with writing. Yeah. I just want to somehow help others through, through my gifts. And he's just like, yeah, I don't know. If, I don't know if that even works, but I'm just going to keep doing that. Well, it sounds like, like, I don't know how to do anything else. (laughs) (laughs) Sounds like he's doing what he's supposed to do. Yeah. He made our list of a hero of imagination. Yeah. And he sort of, can you give me a tidbit of one story or something? Is there anything we can taste about, uh, um, you mean like excerpts? Yeah. Do you have anything you can remember? I don't have anything particularly. Hmm. Uh, he did write this. One of my favorite, um, books is, uh, of his is the rainbow stories. Uh, which, in his characteristic way, he says, "Rainbow Stories, a novel, right?" So, how could it be stories and a novel at the same time? But you can tell that a lot of it's based in real life, like stories about San Francisco in the '80s, because that's where he, he used to live in the Tenderloin, okay. in San Francisco in the '80s. And he hung out with a lot of like prostitutes, uh, the skinhead scene, just to like see what that was all about. So he's he's like uh, he's very much a true journalist. In that he puts himself in situations and sort of tries to figure out what it's all about without judging. Um, but that that book, Rainbow Story, is pretty cool. It's it's and a collection of different stories, but it all adds up to some larger novel. Yeah, he calls it a novel because I think he's being funny. His sense of humor is very dry. Um, uh, there's a story in that. You remember? Do you remember uh, research laboratories where they have those giant mechanical dinosaurs fighting each other, breathing fire? It's research Sanf- it's laborat- a San Francisco uh, thing. I've seen dragons shooting. I mean, met- metal dinosaurs fighting, but yeah. I don't know where it was from. San Francisco. Okay. Anyway, he has a he has a uh, a piece in there. So each each story has like a color associated with it. And w- and one that the one that I liked was called the Indigo Engineers, and it was all about the guys from Survival Research Survival Research Laboratories. That's what it is. Sounds like a Burning Man group. Yeah, and just like him him being inept, trying to help out, and and you know just di- just like in the world of these people that are building these giant machines with blow torches in their mouth and saws there. and stuff. No, he's a, he's a clumsy. Because his vision is terrible. His vision is terrible, so he's he's a kind of a all thumbs guy. Anyway, to me, he's a he's a hero of the imagination. Okay, right on. And he's still alive. What's his name again? One more time. William T. Volman. Okay. Check him out. He uh, doesn't drive because his eyesight's so bad. He doesn't have his license. Doesn't have a cell phone. Doesn't uh, use the internet. Wow. Yeah. And he's like, uh, cars, he's like, I'm against cars because they annihilate space. Uh, I'm against, um, he, uh, what is he say? He's like, I'm against TV because it annihilates time. It's like, huh. Interesting. Huh. I and mean, uh, I for someone just wading into his vast corpus of material, I would recommend a book, uh, which is kind of a, kind of a, a, a reader. It's called Ex- uh, "Expelled from Eden," a William T. Volman reader, and it has like excerpts of stories, has like unpublished stuff, uh, excerpts from a screenplay that he wrote based on one of his books. Oh, cool! So it's just like a sampler, a, a sampler, and that gives you a good idea of what he's all about. Okay. He actually wrote, uh, like in the '80s, he wrote to the president of. Saudi Arabia saying that he he would volunteer to be sh- shot in uh <laughs> like put on a satellite and 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 go on a mission to a to a meteor like he just volunteered yeah yeah 
which is totally something that I talked about uh, in my younger younger days. I was like, yeah, I'd do that. I'd take a one-way trip. And then years later, I read William T. Vollman had the same sort of feeling. Huh. It's like, huh, that's a true kindred spirit. That reminds me of the Peter Joseph idea that I had years ago. Okay. Interesting. What was his? Well, my idea and his idea would be to funnel money into developing multiple story vertical farming in poorer places mm. to immediately meet the need of nutrition for people. And then you just go you go in that door. You meet the need of nutrition and huh. uh like a skyscraper of mm-hmm. vertical farming. Yeah. And you it That's would have cool. to be have to be a little subsidied at first. It would. Um, which would either involve pr- public or private donors and uh, uh, basically have that set up and start yeah. that cycle and so the community begins to trust it. You build trust and then you make it as free as possible until it could be fully free and just a service like pg e is a service, but you pay for it, I guess. Maybe a better example is like you just add it to the list of air, water, food, you Hello, hello. We got. We what got is a, that? I don't know what's going on there. Is it me? Is it this one? Oh, I think we determined it was this one last time, didn't we? Oh, there we that? go. Okay, we gotta be careful with that one. Some wire. We got some wire problems. How are you? Surpri- we don't have enough cables. Are you surprised that we have some technical difficulties here? Surprised that it didn't show up earlier. Yeah, it's it's got a little Check. wobbly, crackly wobble crack to it. That's so crazy. You know, it's okay. We're. Yeah, I just wish I knew exactly where the problem was. Yeah. Um, so wait, where were we? Talking about Peter Joseph's idea of vertical farming. So yeah, get that going, um, and begin the process of making it like air, water, food, and then continue adding things to it based on technological <laughs> advancements and uh, the increasing gesundheit. Thank you. Uh, the increasing cheapification of technology too oh, okay so basically ride how technology gets cheaper all the time yeah and then maximize that with because you if you if you put it right in the where the people are you remove so much waste of distribution i mean food in california like has an average of like twenty thousand miles and it's like 10 hydrocarbon
Ooh, it sounds crazy. What's with that sound? Can you guys... Hello. That's one side. It's working. Oh. That's, uh, that's a little crazy. So, huh, we got some technical difficulties here. It's going, it's fun though. Some mic is on. Like a computer mic. Picking up rooms. Here, let's see. That's what it sounds like. Sound. Input. It's weird that it just suddenly started. It's been on, but it's still going on now. I'll put volume. Input. No. Volume zero. Output. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Whoa, 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 whoa. No, 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 no